something weird, something just, I'm sorry, something less. I, I got this yesterday, but that's not the weird thing. The weird thing is these are fashion glasses and they don't protect against the sun. Sunglasses that don't really do anything against the sun. Yeah, that's my confusion as well. So um, sometimes things are weird and I'm channeling my best Casey Neistat. I'm gonna, I'm, I, this is not me. Uh, let's do it like this. Sometimes things are weird. And today's video, we're gonna talk about Atari and my game being on Atari. Atari, that's, that's the company that started gaming, that started my career, that started the whole ecosphere of where I actually make my money for the last 20, almost 20 years. And now I'm releasing a game on Atari. I think it's full circle. Well, it's not full circle because then I have to quit, but I, I want to continue a little bit more. But it's like almost full circle. We're almost there, so, sort of, after the intro. And it's gonna be an interesting video. I'm also gonna tie this into some business tips and information for game developers. I have, uh, it's, it's gonna be weird, but we're gonna make this all come together in one amazing video. Well, probably not amazing, just a, a little bit uh, funny and a distraction for you. If you have like a lunch break and need a little bit of time to do something else, after the intro. So while the Atari is updating, and I've mentioned this I think in a couple of last video or when we did the iArcade a few weeks ago, every time I boot up a console, doesn't matter which one, it needs a firmware update or something that pretty much makes me sit and wait. And by the time it's usually updated and done, I'm not interested in gaming anymore. But uh, this is for the video, so we're gonna wait for this. And while we're waiting, I wanna talk about three developers. And I'm not naming names because there are not actual developers, they are uh, different developers that all share the same story. And I talked to a lot of developers. Uh, first developer, he creates games for the PC, mostly focusing on Steam, but also released on itch.io and maybe Humble here and there, stores like that. But most of his focus, his business is Steam. His games are perfect fit for mobile. They would be amazing on a tablet, but also on a phone it would really work. Um, however, he won't release games on mobile. He just finds mobile ugly, uninteresting, not his thing. He rather focuses on PC. All right, second developer. And if this sounds familiar, you think I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the other guy that's like you. All right. Second guy, uh, developed for consoles. Uh, he prefers the console ecosphere because you know the device, you know the hardware, you know what it is. Um, it has game controllers, it, you know what it is and you don't have the sometimes annoying PC gamers that want all the, that just have high demands or run different kind of software that causes your game to malfunction, stuff like that. So he finds releasing on PC um, just not that interesting because there's too much hardware variation and he doesn't want to fix every tiny thing or every time somebody has a missing driver or something he needs to do help this and support stuff and he doesn't like that so he sticks to console and of course the third developer and you might have guessed it he only releases on mobile um, I think mostly because he finds it a safe thing he doesn't really know PC games he doesn't really play PC games he doesn't know the audience he doesn't know how to do it how to handle it and uh, probably maybe doesn't think his games belong on PC. So the thing with those developers is that I've been them. I've been there, I have I know their pain and struggle. Um, if you're releasing on a certain platform, you know that platform, you get to know it, you learn all about it, you know the gamers, you actually use it, and you know what to expect from it and what gamers expect from it. So you're releasing there and it's safe. 
but you're also missing out on a lot of uh, little niche platforms like the Atari. Bringing it back, bring it all circle while it's still updating. Let's bring it back to the Atari. Um, I'm now releasing games on the Atari and it's a very niche market. Um, just like the IRK, we're talking about, I don't know, maybe um, 10k units, maybe less. Not all of those units are in the hands of customers. Some are just um, in warehouses or at store shelves or somewhere else uh, that they're not really being used. So uh, less than 10k users. <clears throat> Let's round it down to like a very low amount, 5,000 users at max. That's gonna be like the maximum amount of gamers you'll be able to sell your game to on a device like this. It can be a little bit more, can be a bit, little bit less. Not everybody's gonna like your game, not everybody's gonna buy your game. Some people have it, but are already done with it and it's collecting dust somewhere. It's gonna be a very tiny audience. That's pretty much the point I'm trying to make. However, it's still gonna be just as big as your main audience is. Because these developers I just talked about, they're releasing games, like the PC developer guy, he releases games and he sells maybe at best three to 5,000 copies of his game on Steam. These are not hit games, but if you do these games in a short enough development time and you know that you're gonna be selling three to 5,000 during the lifespan of your game, um, you can make it work. And that's what these developers do. They are making it work. They are making a living from games but they're just releasing on one platform and ignoring the other platforms because they find it too much work, too much trouble, and they don't understand the other platforms. Um, learning and figuring out what that other platform wants and how to best serve it with your games and uh, figuring out how to make your games run on that platform and, and the interface and all that stuff, um, it's gonna be worth it because you can literally double your investment with even a small audience or even a niche device like an Atari or an Ouya or an iArcade. Um, you're not selling millions of copies on PC. You're not selling millions of copies on uh, the Switch or on Xbox or whatever. Not a million copies on mobile. But if you're selling like 3,000, 4,000 copies, which is pretty good already. But if you can do that on different platforms, you're doubling your revenue or tripling pretty easy with a minimum amount of work because you already have that game. And I don't understand, the, or I, I understand the developers. I understand their trouble and how hard it is to release on these platforms and just understanding the platform and finding the development tools and making it all work. I understand that fully, I've been there. Uh, but it's so worth it. Now, I originally started back in 2004 on mobile phones, and then I moved on to iPhone and Android when they started to conquer the market. Um, so for me, it was an easy transition from mobile to smartphone. Um, and PC was always there, but for me, it was also uh, difficult to release games on PC. My type of games, I wasn't sure they had a spot they had a place amongst those type of games uh, steam wasn't available you couldn't get on steam as a single solo developer or maybe you could but it was very difficult um, so my first pc games were in 2015 um, and they were pretty much ports of my mobile games gunslugs heroes of loot they're still on steam um, they were never mobile games in that you had to slide and do weird stuff they were always pretty much controller based games um, but a lot of PC gamers pretty much said well this game was on mobile first this is a mobile stupid silly boring game we spit on you and we don't like you uh, that took a long time before people actually uh, transitioned and stopped saying those things maybe my games did get better for PC gamers or I just had more settings and preferences and then it looks like a PC game not sure what the difference is but at some point I just immersed myself into PC gaming and learned all about it and checked out other games and just made my games fit the platform better. I now develop games for all platforms and it took a long time, it's a long process, but it does allow me to release games on all these platforms. And um, you have to immerse yourself just in the target audience and learn about it, learn how to make your games work. The first couple of games, they won't be perfect for the platform you're releasing on. But over time, you will understand, I better not do this and I better make sure that the interface is flexible like that. So that when I do a mobile version or a console version, it will all still work without a little effort. 
and that's pretty much what you got to learn and do because you can you can just make more money by releasing on a lot of other platforms but apart from making money i know that's an ugly word for some there are a couple of other things that make this very interesting i'm still waiting for atari and we're now on update three out of four so let's let's quickly talk about the other stuff that makes the releasing games on different platforms interesting sorry i'm just oh, come on i had this whole video planned with an atari and meganoid on it and yeah uh, atari is rebooting i think we're almost there uh quickly let's do the list i have a list uh, obviously first reason to port and release on as many platforms as possible money but if you're not into money i, I mean i'm not into money but i need money it's just how the world works anyway um obvious uh, brand building or less obvious brand building people uh, people will know your name your company name your game titles your game names those are very interesting things to have uh, the more people know your game and if they see it on a new platform in the future or if they were a mobile gamer but are now more on consoles or pc they will recognize that game name let's play it on my pc and they might actually buy it again so that's a good thing um business opportunity orange pixel uh, with having all these games and released on so many platforms i look like a big company of course um, i'm not even though the console releases are mostly handled code wise by serious lion on the discord um, i'm still just one guy and i create all these games and release it on a lot of platforms and to be honest i think serious lion knows it the Atari could probably run my original version without the mono game version because it's a Linux box but uh, we had these console versions and I think uh, it was just a good thing to do this together so that's why I decided to not even try my Java versions but just go with the mono game version and see what we could do with it so yeah I look like a big company having all these games released on Sony platforms and that's why I also uh, got an in with PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, it was very easy for me to get developer status or license, uh, get developer kits and also for extra hardware. Um, I just have a lot of games, I bring a lot of games to the table. They're not huge titles, but it's a large collection of games, so it does help. Um, I just look a lot bigger, I also get a lot of um, other companies contacting me with stuff. Um, oftentimes that's not interesting to me, but um, being a bigger company, looking like a bigger company, that's a plus. If all those points aren't interesting enough, then this is probably maybe the biggest point I can make to hopefully make some developers, some of you, uh, release on multiple platforms. What if, this is just a what if, what if the platform you're releasing games on ends? It just stops being there. It's, it's not there anymore. It's gone, it's over or it changed so drastically that your games will not run on it anymore. That's a what if. So if you're just making mobile games and suddenly iOS and Android are um, challenged by something new from Microsoft, not Windows Mobile, let's ignore that one, something completely different that's just so amazingly, awesomely, just perfect that nobody uses an iPhone anymore, nobody has Android device anymore, and just within like two, three years, they are gone. Yeah, diversification. I think that's I think that's a word. Diversif diversify your platforms, your revenue streams. Make sure um, you get a little bit of money from different platforms here and there. That's pretty much it. I'm still waiting for the Atari update. It's doing another couple of updates. I'm not sure what it's doing. Which is frustrating because um, I think that was all. I think I think that I think that was all I had I had to say. And then I wanted to show you Meganoid running on the Atari, um, which is about to release. It's it's uh, oh I think I still why I personally like to release on everything like the Atari, like the i arcade, the Ouya, all those things. I just love the thrill of releasing something. I have all these marketing materials for games ready. I have videos, trailers, I have the games. And I can just, with the minimum amount of work, I can release on a new platform. Especially this one, it's 
this one was fairly easy. The IRK took some work, but also fairly easy because it's Android. It just needed some controller work. Uh, same on the Atari. It just needed some uh, work on the controller support. It's fairly easy work. I think we spent a couple of days on it. Serious Lion doing some of the work, me doing all the testing, uploading it. And we got a bunch of games uh, ready to go. Right now we're launching Meganoid, uh, but we got a couple of others ready to go. Um, we're just gonna spread them out over the coming months, I guess. And uh, it's gonna be fun. And I really want my games to just be everywhere, have everybody able to play them. Doesn't matter on what you're playing my games, uh, as long as you can, as long as you play them and enjoy them. Atari logo booting up, come on, no more updates. I'm ready for it. And we finally got it boot up. And there we go, uh, booting it up. And we have a bunch of games here, but um, this is pretty much just the developer stuff. So uh, these are a couple of games on here that you can try, but I can't really access um, my own games on it. I have to uh, push my games to the device using uh, Linux commands and all that stuff. So let's quickly push Meganoid on there. And here we go, pretty much, um, yeah, it's pretty much the same version as you've seen everywhere. And uh, it just plays as well as, well, the PC version, the Steam version, the mobile version, the Switch version. It's exactly the same game, but uh, on the Atari, pretty cool. And um, it's been a lot of fun uh, trying out the game again and playing it again. And uh, getting killed again. But yeah, it's fun and I hope uh, we'll be able to reach a lot of Atari gamers and um, have them enjoy something that looks like a retro game, but um, is pretty much using a lot of modern gameplay tactics. And, and that's pretty much what describes all my games. Um, old school uh, looks and visuals and sounds here and there, but uh, modern gameplay, like this is pretty much a roguelike. It's, um, procedural level so every game you play will be different the layout will be different um, you can unlock certain things you can permanently unlock stuff like jetpacks uh, zapping guns and um, special helmets a special device that will allow you to gain points by just stamping on little critters there's a lot of stuff here and um, i hope everybody's going to be enjoying it on their atari And as a little bonus, uh, this is also coming, Gunslux Part 2, uh, which will have two player support like on all the other platforms. So you can uh, grab a buddy and just go crazy and uh, shoot a bunch of enemies. Which is pretty much the best description I can give about Gunslux. Just move forward, shoot everything and see if you can make it to the finish line. And that's Meganoid on the Atari. And that wing, yeah. Watch the video and you'll understand. So um, it's pretty cool to see it up and running on the Atari. And um, like I said before, it's a niche market. I'm not expecting huge numbers, but I still think it could uh, get close to what the Switch version has been doing, uh, pretty much. Also not huge numbers, but if you combine all those platforms together, it's becoming an interesting number. So um, we'll see how it all goes. Um, I'm probably gonna be doing some sort of uh, poll on Twitter um, and give Atari players the choice between the next two games. One of them will be the next game. So I'm thinking you're gonna be able to choose between uh, roaming the dungeons with a buddy, Heroes of Loot, or maybe um, turn-based moving around in a space station, space guns. Those are probably gonna be uh, the options I'm giving but we'll see, I haven't really thought it all through just yet. So I don't think many of you have an Atari to play this on and test it and try it out, but unless I'm posting this on the Atari Discord, then I probably have some Atari viewers this week. So hi, stay a while, watch next week's video, subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. Um, and anyway, that's it for this week's video. A lot of talking, a lot of waiting on an Atari, but we made it through. Uh, I hope you had fun. I had fun doing all this and um, I will see you next week. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, drop on the Discord. We have an actual game running on the Discord and we now have weekly top scores, which uh, some people are very, very into. Like my wife is actually trying to beat me on this game now. So um, 
come hang out on the Discord and I'll see you next week. Bye. I'm ready to show off Meganar. Checking for update. <laughs> Almost there. I can feel it. I can taste it. I should just cut this all out of the video and just do like, yeah, it's ready. It's not, but I should act like, that. yeah, it's ready. All right, I'm just gonna cut this all out and just, this is the end of the video, I guess, so now using this as a blooper. I'm just gonna do launch first and then record the rest of the video and hopefully it will be up and running and ready to go. And I can show you Meganoid, which we had a lot of fun getting it up and running and still a lot of, a very cool game. I'm just gonna do the wrap up first. That's a, I'm gonna do the wrap up of this video, which you just saw before this blooper. And then I'm gonna record everything before that. That's how videos are done, people. That's, that's how it works. Okay, uh, anyway, this is the end of the blooper. So thanks for watching the blooper. See you next week. Now I'm gonna record the ending of the video where I say, see you next week. Mind, yeah, that, all right.